for a word right where you are, shout yeah, type yes, type amen, type I am expecting because he is an audience participation preacher. So don't be quiet or emotionally constipated over there in your living room, but get on there and type, type, type what you're expecting God to do and amen the man of God. Are you ready? Type in, I'm ready. We welcome you, sir. I don't know. I just, I just about as soon, I just about, I don't know if people not from Kentucky understand. I just about as soon. About as soon. About as soon. Uh-huh. It's, it's kind of like a bassoon. I about as soon. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead and worship God all night long yes, under that tremendous anointing. And not just an anointing, to sing an anointing to exhort, Thank you, Lord. to preach, Thank you, Lord. to prophesy. To pray, to declare, yes, to decree. Yes, it's just getting stronger and stronger yeah, on yeah, you yeah. and stronger on Miss Yolanda yes, and stronger yes, on this team. Hi. It's a it's just a marvelous thing Hi. to get to participate in. And and that's what we've got to do, you know, at Valor Christian College yes, sir. where world changers are made, then then they get cut out of a rock yes, like sir. that. Yes, you see, right. with their own giftings, their own talents, their right. own abilities, their own anointings, right. but to use that all in the flow right. of the Spirit of God. Right. And uh, if you, if you want to know about Valor Christian College where world changes are made, these are the kind of folks that get to train you. Right. Folks like Pastor Chris folks like Miss Yolanda. So why are you like those lepers just sitting outside the city gate? They said, we might just well get up and go in yonder because there's plenty in yonder. And one of them said, well, if we get up and go in there, they might kill us. And another one looked at him and said, hey, if we're going to die sitting right here. Now, my question to you is, you going to sit right there and die or you going to get up on, and move toward the fire? Yeah. There is a revival breaking out. I've never seen anything like it. We have only been meeting at the altar for eight, nine, ten, for 10 days now, believing God for 100,000 people. And that means you, and that means your spouse and your children and your grandmother and your aunties and your uncles and your cousins and your friends. We need everybody to become one of 100,000. Some people came in my house the other day. I keep the books laying on the kitchen counter because that's where everybody wants to go, you know, like at Miss Yolanda's, get some of that pound cake. Now her, her pound cake, it multiplies exponentially. It doesn't just add to you. It doesn't just multiply for you. It adds exponentially to you. But I leave those books laying right there on the kitchen counter so that when folks come in, I say, hey, if you all, have you signed up to be one of 100,000 to meet me at the altar and pray for the convicting power of the whole. I've had four people get a hold of me this week. Pastor, I need to repent. The convicting power of God has come upon me. I had one say, I need to resign or get right. Yeah, said, I can't walk around in here anymore and be living the way I've been living, which is a lie. I've been living, I've been living a lie. I've been putting a face on, I've been putting a shout on, but when I get out yonder, I'm a different me. And I said, let's pray, for that's what we want, the convicting power of God. And then for forgiveness to flow, and joy to flow, and deliverance to flow, you need to be one of 100 thousand. Now we're just getting started. Can you imagine when 100,000 of us are agreeing for God's spirit to move, move upon the church, 
move upon us as individuals move upon pastors move upon worship leaders move upon sunday school teachers and say here i am lord use me i'm at the altar where sacrifice is made i'm at the altar where heaven comes down and meets earth i need you to meet me at the altar now right there online and i so i've been having folks sign up at the kitchen table i just keep a stack i keep a stack of them in my car have you signed up yet sam have you signed up i'm asking sam shaking his camera yes i'm gonna check i'm gonna see if you signed up sam sam's the guy running this camera right now and i want to make sure that he's signed up and all his family signed up his parents are elders here and all their family and all their cousins and all their kinfolk and then everybody get to praying the power and the glory and the healing and the deliverance and salvation of the Lord our God poured out on this earth. So right there, right there where you are, where you're watching right now. Now I have to ask, Miss Megan, is it up there? It's right there. All you need to do is click on there. And I mean, do it. I command you in the Lord. I want you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray every day for revival. Number one. Number two, I want you to fast something. Why? Jesus said this miracle is only done by prayer and fasting. So you have to do both. So you give up something every day. Maybe it's your favorite Netflix program. Maybe it's, I don't know what it could be for you. Maybe it's getting your nails done one week. And what would you do if pastor had, if people had to see the real you? Look at mine. I don't, I don't have a manicure and I sure enough don't have a pedicure. So I want you to give up something. You see, I want you then Thirdly, and this is so important, every day for the past over five years now, the first thing I do every morning of my life is kneel down at the altar with the cup and the bread and receive the blood and body of Jesus Christ. Listen, healing is a children's bread. I have a word for you. You're sick in your body. You've been tormented. You've been unable to sleep. Whatever is coming against you, I'm telling you right now, receive Holy Communion and you're not gonna recognize that situation seven days from right now. You receive it. I don't care if you have to get, you know, some, uh, I don't know what kind of grape juice or whatever, and a saltine cracker. Don't, don't be all religious about it. It's the posture of your heart that the sweet psalmist of Israel, David, taught us the posture of our heart. Oh God, I feel the spirit right now. God, there are about, there are about 300 people right now going to repent of this one sin, the sin of presumption. The sin that God's always forgiven you before and he's gonna forgive you again. That is to presume upon the Holy Spirit David said, that's the greatest sin I've ever committed. I thought, oh, I hear you, Father. He said, I thought that my liaison with Bathsheba wouldn't come back to me. Can I tell you what your Bible says? Be sure your sin, one translation said, will track you down. Not because God wants to condemn you, but because God wants to set you free. I don't know where this modern church came from, but I'm here to tell you this. We're about to go back. We're about to redig our father's wells. We're, ah, we're just about to gain the anointings of the past and accelerate them into the present and we were refused to be refused and denied to be denied to have a revival, on, a revival in your home. Yeah. Can you imagine 
coming home from work and finding your junior high children, your high school children, your little elementary children walking around in your house with tears dripping off their cheeks, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Hallelujah. Just as sure as I'm here, just as sure as you're there. But God said, I will yet be inquired of concerning this. You know what that means? Somebody's got to pray. Somebody's got to fast. Somebody's got to become one. Healing is a children's bread. I don't care if you need healing in your marriage, healing in your relationship, healing on your job, healing in your body, in your mind, in your emotions. Some of you need a healing in your will because you're fighting against your own will all the time. God does not want to break your will. A broken will is of no benefit to him. He wants to have a consecrated, surrendered will. That's what Jesus taught us, didn't he? Knelt down there in the full light of a Passover moon, praying until his perspiration became blood and saying, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Can I tell you that there is no freedom available to the human family like the freedom of surrendering totally and completely to the living Christ. If God does not move in us, our senior elder's wife, Miss Paula Canfield used to sing a song she said, if we don't move in Jesus, we dare not move at all. That he might breathe through us. That he might speak through us. That he might click on the phone through us. Is that consecrated? I think one of the greatest things God ever told me, told me last Sunday morning while I was preaching at that great Elkhart, Indiana campus, Let's see here. Let's go to let's let's go to Facebook. Let's see. Do you do you have Facebook on the altar? Huh? Do, do you have Twitter on the altar? Do you know that even if you got the they all got those secret accounts now, you know. Yeah. Yeah, just my friends can see. Do you know do you know that your Bible says men love darkness? rather than light for one reason. I never saw anybody hide to do something good. You're supposed to say, drop the mic. Drop the mic right there. You never saw anybody hide in a corner to do something good. You, you never saw anybody hide in a corner to tell and go, go into anonymity to say something positive. So what's all the secrecy about? The next time somebody says to you, uh, I, I need to tell you something, but now listen, you, you don't tell anybody. What a lying spirit. Do you know what I say to people when, when they even, even Miss Joni, will occasionally say that to me. And I said, no, no, wait, wait just a minute. Unless it's something that I can personally do something about, I don't want to hear it because that's gossip. Again, we have a church that has no spirit of conviction that does not walk with the Holy Spirit so that when you're moving in the wrong direction, the sweet Holy Spirit nudges you. Say, whoa, hold on now. Just before you send that thing, why don't you kneel down and lay that phone out there and say, is this pleasing to you? There wouldn't be near as much activity, would there? Huh? Children hiding accounts from their parents. I'm talking to you, friends hiding things from each other. You know what your whispering does? Your Bible says, 
It separates even the choicest, the best friends. Triangulation, me and you talk about him, then he and I talk about you, then the two of you talk about me. Triangulation. Are you here with me right now? I feel God. Yes. Listen, we can't pray for the Holy Spirit to convict us and not have him move like this right. when the Holy Spirit gets to move it right. like it was moving in worship on Pastor Chris. The water gets troubled. That's right, sir. Junk comes to the surface. That's right. Not so you can be exposed. God doesn't want to expose you. People want to do all the exposing. God doesn't want to judge you. Some people say, well, only God can judge me. He doesn't want to judge you. He wants to forgive you. Thank you Lord. There will come a time when he will judge. He's not judging you. He's reaching out a nail pierced hand to you. He's saying, putting his arm around you and saying, kneel down with me right here, right now at this altar, and we'll take care of this. And you'll get up a different person, full of God, free. But don't think that's your last trip. Joni went away, built an altar once for a week. She said, I've got to get away. I've got to go be with the Lord. So she went in a little cabin, didn't have a television set, didn't have anything. There she was. About the third day, she got a hold of me. And she said, God is changing me. I said, what do you mean? She said, I came out here and asked me to show me himself, to reveal himself to me. And since I got here, all he's done is show me me. And I didn't like what I saw. When's the last time you were that quiet? When is the last time you walked up to the mirror of the word of God? The Bible says, that the natural man, the natural, not you, the natural man mm, goes away and forgets what manner of man he is. But we beholding ourselves in the word of truth, the mirror yes. of God's word. Yes. We don't forget who we are. Yes. You may see, oh, I have sinned. And on the very next page, you'll hear the story of Calvary. Hallelujah. Ah! Hallelujah. Woo! I know there's nobody in here with me, but I, 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 I feel a Pentecost run yes, coming on me. <laughs> Forgiveness is available. You can stop repenting when you stop sinning. And if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. That's what the Bible said. Would you, under God, begin to focus on you? Would you stop trying to get the speck out of somebody else's eye? When you got a beam hanging in your own, this is Christianity. This is the kingdom of God. This is me and God and Christ being formed in me, formed in my mind, formed in my body, formed in my actions, formed in my words, formed in my family. You've got to get to the altar. You got to come with me. You got to meet me at the altar. The waters are troubled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. I speak to you now that the Spirit, now I'm going to pronounce a blessing on you. Are, you. are you ready for it? 
I'm anointed for it right now. Are you ready? I know when the healing anointing comes. I know when this anointing comes, and I know what it's for. I'm ready right now to release a blessing to you. I am ready to release all of the goodness of God and of his kingdom to you right now where you are. How shall I do it? I release the goodness of repentance to you right now that you would feel God putting his finger on things in your life and saying, if you'll get rid of that, there's about to be a rushing river of forgiveness and mercy and grace and power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Freedom. Must be demanded by the oppressed. Somebody's got to tell God, tell yourself, you know, you can't go to God till you come to yourself. And some of us, are you listening? Some of us have not come to ourselves. We can't get to a place of honesty. Had boy sitting in that hog bin finally came to himself. He couldn't go back to daddy's house until he came to himself. Christianity is all about Jesus and you. Not Jesus and somebody else around you. You. God wants you to become gold tried by fire. The Holy Spirit and his convicting power will do two things. Number one, they will burn out of you everything that is displeasing to God. Fire does more than make you shout. Fire will get you down. What do you, what do they tell you to do when the house gets on fire? Can I tell you what God, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me about 100,000 people? God saying the house is on fire. You better get down. You better get down. You better humble yourself before me. Even prostrate yourself before me because that fire will burn the chaff out of you. It will burn the lying spirit out of you. It will burn the sensual spirit out of you. It will burn the pornographic desire out of you. It will burn the need for alcohol and drugs and everything in between, because you won't need it. It'll burn it out of you. But you got to get in the fire. When the fire comes, the first thing to do is humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Meet me, meet me at the altar, meet me. And the second thing that the Holy Spirit's fire and conviction and power and presence will do for you, the second thing, it will burn everything of God to a permanent position in your heart. Woo! It'll drive out all the dross. It'll drive out all of the impurity of your thoughts, of your heart, which is altogether wicked unless it is under the control of the Spirit of God. Permanent faith, permanent forgiveness, permanent, 
permanent unity, one for all, all for one. No big me, no little you, no trying to exalt yourself by murdering somebody so you can stand up on top of them. Meet me. Meet me at the altar and God will transform your life yes. till your family won't even recognize you. Everybody around you will sense You've been with Jesus. You don't talk the same anymore. You, your gait is different. Your eyes look different. There's life behind your eyes. Yes. Oh, God, come upon your people. Yes, God. Every willing heart, yes, God. every contrite spirit, no haughtiness, no pride, no self-will, no selfishness, no, the kingdom of God is all about me. The kingdom of God is that Christ might be formed in you. So I have a question for you. Will you meet me? Will you meet me at the altar? Will you join me in finding something every day to say, today, Lord, I'm not putting my hand on that. I surrender that to you today. And then pray, Holy Spirit, when I begin to respond in an unholy way, when I begin to respond in a way that grieves the Holy Spirit, do you understand that the Holy Spirit, remember God said he's in the form like a dove? There's no easier frightened bird than the dove. There's no song quite as beautiful as the morning dove. I have feeders out so I get to listen to them outside my bedroom window every morning. Do you know the Holy Spirit is very easily grieved your attitude causes him to shy away. Your words offend him. Well, I didn't think that, that, can I just tell you something? Stop the vulgarity. Stop laughing at things that are unholy. You're a Christian. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, but I'm with all my Christian friends and they all understand the Holy Spirit does not understand. And that's why then you go to bed and try to call on God and your insides feel dead. You've grieved him. Oh, but he'll come back when you get in the altar. He will always, without question, meet you at the altar. So I want you to meet me. Come just as you are. No, take your little religious face off. Don't worry about your mascara. Ask God to let you cry it all off. When's the last time you had a really, really good cry yes, in the presence of God? 
When's the last time he so sweetly reached out and put his hand on your heart, talked to you about how he's going to create more of the Spirit of Christ in you? Turn the blooming cell phone off for 10 minutes. The average adult in the United States of America spends 10 hours a day looking at a screen. 10 hours a day. I don't like to do anything I enjoy for 10 hours. That's too long. That's too long for me. I want you to meet me at the altar. Oh, I want God to become so real to you. Not just about going to church, not just about singing songs and listening to worship music. No, no, no. I keep hearing the Holy Spirit say, I want to form Christ in them. I want to mold them and make them into the image of Christ, but they won't come to the altar. They're too busy. They've got to be here and then there and then somewhere else and somewhere else and then they've got to be over here and after that they're going to do that. And then they, and I, 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 never, I never have seen anybody's daily schedule that said prayer. Where, where's that? Uh, worship. 15 minutes. 8 o'clock to 8.15. Worship. I don't understand how people don't love God and the things of God. And then I think, yeah, I do understand. Because they're never really around Him. If you're around him, you fall in love with him. I promise you that. He will become more real to you than the appendages at the end of your arm. He's real. Yes, sir. Old folks used to sing that. He's real. He's real. I know he's real. And they did. Yes. Because there wasn't a service That's right. that they weren't around the altar. That's right, sir. The mothers of the church. That's right. Little children. Praying and seeking God. Hallelujah. Oh, we're too busy. We've got to get through the program. Here's, here's what I scheduled for you tonight. You know, this page and 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 this one and all, all, all these others. But God is so close to me right now. He's, he's so real to me right now. You're about to be healed right now. Be healed. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Just put your hands wherever on your body you have pain. Pain, I bind you and command you. Go now. Go now. In the name of Jesus. Go, I say. Stiffness and weakness. Oh, I speak to Bishop Roger Tatum. I speak to Tiz Huck. I command every cancer cell in your body to die now. You have no right in the temple of God. Oh, Father, put a desire in your people to be with you. Just to be quieted in your presence, just to, just to feel you all around them. Used to sing that song, I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Is your heart so cold you no longer sense him? 
Oh, my dear friend, there's such a blessing waiting for you at the altar. Maybe tonight at three in the morning, you'll awaken. Maybe you'll think, well, I must need a drink of water, and, but you're not thirsty. The first thing people do when they wake up in the middle of the night is go to the refrigerator. What if the first thing you did tonight is go to your knees? Get that altar. Grab a hold of the bed sheets and say, God, like ancient Samuel, did you call me? I thought I heard you call me. He's looking for you. He's waiting for you at the altar. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. He's calling for you and for me. Mercy drops round us are falling. (laughs) But for the power we plead, he's waiting, he's watching, calling all sinners, come on home. He's not saying, sinner, go to hell. He's saying, sinner, come on to the altar, meet me. I'm waiting on you with outstretched arms, with a loving heart, with nail pierced hands. I'm waiting on you to wrap my arms around you, to comfort you, to forgive you, to wash you, to cleanse you, to breathe my life into you. Oh, hallelujah. Do it right now, Lord. Do it this night, I pray. Come upon every willing heart. Let Christ be formed in every hungry heart. And if we're not hungry, Lord, let us get so sick of the world's garbage that we've been placing into ourselves that we get rid of it and become hungry for you. You've let other people get in his place. Some have let your job get in his place. Some have let your mirth and your good time get in his place. Some have let children get in his place. Some have let career get in his place. Watch this. Some have let church work get in his place. I helped a hungry heart two days ago out in the parking lot, working and working and toiling for God. And I said, well, wait just a minute now. I know you've been at your typewriter. I know you've been at your computer. I I know you've been at your job, but have you been to the altar today? Did you pause there? Did you receive the body and the blood? And sometimes, maybe you'll get up from the altar and think nothing has changed. But believe me, dear hungry heart tonight, two days later, his presence will come like a mighty rushing wind and fill your life and say, I was there. I heard that prayer. I saw that sacrifice. I received that consecration. I was there in the midst of that worship. And I've just come to bless you, to let you know, I'll always meet you at the altar. So join me. I want 100,000 people. I'll send the book to you that I wrote. Meet me at the altar. What is an altar? 
If my people, examples of biblical altars, 12 suggested areas for you to pray while you're at the altar. Just take one and spend a week on it. Look up scriptures about it. and Consecrate something to God. Oh, he is going to meet you. Look, this is about a personal relationship. This is not about going to church. Sometimes church gets in the way because you want the church to organize your prayer life. You want the church to organize your witnessing. You want the church to dictate your giving. You want the church to, do, to dominate your consecration. That Bible says, let every man seek out his own salvation in fear and trembling before God. The preacher's work would be so much easier if the people visited the altar. I believe you're going to. It's right there on your screen. I'm a bit technologically challenged, but it's right there. You can receive the book. You can sign up. You can request more. You should, you should get it for every member of your family. You should get it for your church pastor. You should consecrate a time in the service before God. Let's all take this book and let's open it up and let's get the pages out of the back and let's make a commitment to meet Pastor Rod at the altar. And we'll see the hand of God move as we've never seen it before. This is a God directive. This is not a Rod idea. Do you understand? You hear God's voice within mine. Sign up, sign up today and meet me at the altar. Now don't go anywhere. I'm gonna let Sam sit down. He's been holding that 150 pound camera the whole time I've been talking to you. He's a good man. We thank God for him, but I'm gonna switch over to that big camera in the middle and I'm gonna to talk to you just a little bit more. So get on there and everybody right now, say, I'm gonna meet you at the altar. Get on there, come on, all over the world. I'm gonna meet you at the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm coming over this way. Here I come. Well, thank you, Lord, for your holy presence. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for your blessing. Thank what a thought that we can meet him at the altar that took the blood of Jesus. That middle wall of partition being just ripped from bottom to top. It was six inches thick, woven out of one thread. And when the price was paid and the blood was shed, God said, I'm coming out of this little holy place back here where the word of God is housed. I'm taking this wall down so you can get to him and he can get to you. Whew. Are you making use of it? Meet me at the altar.